to Prophecy Times Part 5. And today we're going to look at the subject of the rapture. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at like a mini series, as it were, on the rapture and look at different facets of the rapture. And today we're just going to introduce this subject in Prophecy Times. And I really want us to focus in the, this session today on what we are looking for. Because the church primarily is not looking for the second coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ is taught. The second coming of Christ is explained. The second coming of Christ is prophetic. And of course, in weeks to come, we'll look at these things. But as a church, as the church people in the church age, primarily we are not looking for the second coming. We are looking for the rapture of the church. Because the second coming is about not the church, it's about the Jews, folks. And if you did watch my previous video, please do, on the Jewish importance. Because the difference is the church at the moment is looking for the rapture. We want to put off this mortality. We want to put off, and we, the scripture says we've grown within ourselves. We want to put off this body. We want to be transformed in this body. We want to, as the scripture says, as we see him, we will be like him. We will put on immortality. These are rapture happenings, folks for the church anyway, that the church will be, whether dead or alive, will be caught up to the Lord in the air and we will be resurrected. If you're dead, we will be transformed if we're alive together at the same time and we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we will put up mortality and put on immortality. It's going to be a fantastic event. Hallelujah. And so the church is looking for that. But I find, of course, a lot of, uh, in a lot of Christian circles, they're looking for the second coming instead of the rapture of the church. And it's so important. Our hope is the rapture. Our comfort, Paul says, comfort one another with these words. Hello, comfort one another with these words about the rapture and so he didn't say that about the second coming he said it about the rapture that we comfort one another each other we encourage we exhort one another with the fact of the rapture that whether we're dead or alive we're going to be caught up to meet the lord in the air this will happen it will take place and we will put off these mortal bodies hallelujah and it's so important where our expectation of the church is because while we can teach the second coming, while we can warn people of the wrath to come, the church is not part of that wrath. And so we've got to understand that we are expecting a rapture to take place. And I know there's different views on this, and I can't answer every view in this particular video, but over the weeks we will make it clear and make it known. But what I'm trying to say is that the church is expectant of the rapture, while the Jewish remnant, the Bible says, in the Jewish remnant, as they are persecuted, as they are uh, kind of uh, assaulted, as they are pursued by the Antichrist, we know that all Israel will be saved, and they are the ones who hide out in the mountains of Petra, and they call out, and blessed be, be the name of the Lord, he that comes in the name of the Lord, and Jesus will return in his second coming. But the scriptures are clear that we come with him, the bride of Christ, the church, come with Christ to the earth. So we are not looking as the church for the, 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 the second coming, because we actually come with Christ in the second coming. We'll be with him. We'll be coming from heaven with him in the second coming. We are looking for him to come for us as the bride, as the church. And that's important that we get it right because we understand that the Jews will call out for him and he will arrive with us and defeat the Antichrist and set up his kingdom. So the Jewish remnant in the future will look for his second coming, but the church is looking for the rapture. And this is so important because what happens is if we don't get this right, 
we begin to exchange scriptures, scriptures that are meant for the rapture become for the second coming in our minds. Certain scriptures that are meant for the second coming uh, become for the rapture of the church. And we get our whole theology mixed up, our whole timing mixed up. And sometimes it can be very discouraged by these things rather than actually comforted, as Paul told us to do. And so we've got a lot of nervous Christians out there, a lot of worried Christians out there, even striving Christians. They want to make it. They want to strive to make it. And they get in the theology mixed up because we are transferring two events and, and, and crisscrossing them. And this has been actually done before, hasn't it? Even when Jesus arrived on the planet in his first coming, the Jewish nation wasn't expecting their Messiah to come that way. They wasn't expecting him to minister that way. They believed in the prophet Daniel. They believed, which are, a lot of scriptures are related to his second coming, as we know. But they saw it, his, the Messiah would arrive that way. He would bring peace. They was under Roman rule. They believed he would bring peace. He would defeat their enemies. He would set up his kingdom on the earth. And, and this is what they believed. And that's their timing, their religious worldview. And their worldview kind of confused them. Their timing confused them. And so is the same today in the church. We, we are looking sometimes through the wrong lenses of time. Even the demons did that, didn't they? In, in, in Jesus' day, when he went to cast out the demons out of that person who had a legion, even the demons started to shout out and says, have you come already to judge us? Yeah, have you come to judge us already? That was, is it time? And so they were a bit confused themselves on this timing. And so as the church, though, we've got the whole counsel of God before us. We've got the scriptures. So we don't get confused between the two. And it's so important. Some people say that the rapture is a new doctrine, a new doctrine. Uh, and that's entirely not true at all. We, we see it within the scriptures itself. And our scripture today is 1 Thessalonians 4, a very famous scripture. Let's read it together. Uh, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And so this is a famous rapture scripture it mentions the catching away or being caught up to meet the lord in the air and again he says comfort one another with these words the problem i'm finding and you're probably finding is that there ain't a lot of comfort around from areas of christianity that prophetically focus on the second coming and forget really about the rapture there's no comfort then. It becomes all about wrath and tribulation. Well, it will for the world, but not for the church. That's not our hope, folks. That's not where we're heading, folks. We are delivered from the wrath to come. And so Christians become burdened. They become confused. They become worried. They become, will I be left behind? They become striving in order. You know, I've got to endure right to the end or am I going to make it? And see, so we'll see a lot of stress. We see a lot of worry. We see a lot of defeat. We see a lot of confusion in the church right now rather than comfort. And I really want to encourage you over the next couple of weeks as we look at the rapture, the rapture is our comfort. It's our comfort as the church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so let's just say that the, the, from the beginning that the, the rapture teaching is not a new teaching. 
some people believed it was first brought about uh, by uh, a theologian called John Darby. And that is not true at all. He might have emphasised the rapture teaching, but it's always been a scriptural teaching. It's true that the word rapture is not used in the Bible at all. But it's not the, the reality of the English word that makes any difference. It's what's conveyed by that word. Is what we convey by the word rapture actually biblical? The meaning of what we mean by rapture, which is caught away or to be catched away, uh, is that biblical? And it's absolutely biblical. The Greek word being a patso is to be catch away, to seize, to snatch away. And so these are words and even Paul says to be caught up. And so that's what is meant by rapture, to be caught up. Of course, these words was translated into Greek, it was translated into Latin, and then translated into English. And we use the word rapture, or to be raptured, to be caught up. And, and that's really what it means. And it means to seize, to carry off, to snatch away, to be caught away. Notice these terminologies, to catch away, to be caught up, as Paul says, to snatch away, to carry off, to seize. And this is interesting, folks, because the rapture is not about us remaining on the earth. It's not about the second coming. This is about us being taken away, snatched away, carried off this earth that's what it's about folks to seize and why is this so important is because this is something passive folks the church can't rapture itself you can't rapture yourself this is totally of the power of god totally the power of god you this ain't about you striving this is the power of god that will lift you off this planet and carry you off seize you and carry you off uh, carry you snatch you catch you away all these terminologies for the rapture and john darby that is known didn't bring uh, bring this uh, uh, doctrine in he understood it and brought it to the masses but it's always been within scripture absolutely and in fact some of the earliest writings of some of the earliest disciples of the apostles what we know as the early church fathers had this same view and used the same terminology that we use today hallelujah and so let's look at some of the early church fathers writings where it mentions some of these things and I quote from the, the book of Heresies 529, or against Heresies 529. And he says, Those nations, whoever, who did not of themselves raise up their eyes unto heaven, nor return thanks to their maker, nor wish to behold the light of truth, but who were like blind mice concealed in the depths of ignorance, the word justly reckons as waste water from a sink, as turning weight of a balance, in fact as nothing, so far useful and serviceable to the just, as stubble conduces towards the growth of the wheat, and its straw, it by means of combustion, serves for the working of gold. Therefore, now this is the key, therefore when in the end the church shall be suddenly caught up from this it is said there shall be shall be tribulation such as though has not been since the beginning neither shall be for this is the last contest of the righteous in which when they overcome they are crowned with incorruption hallelujah so here we see one of the early church fathers saying this that when in the end the church shall be suddenly caught up from this. Notice the terminology he uses, caught up. It's the same terminology Paul the Apostle uses. It shall be caught up from one place to another. It shall be caught up. 
and it is said, and it says suddenly, this is, uh, as Paul says, in a twinkling of an eye stuff, it's suddenly caught up, it's suddenly seized, hallelujah, and then it is said there shall be tribulation such as has not been since the beginning, beginning neither shall be. And so it's clear again, in not that we use the early church fathers as a, a basis for our doctrine, but what I'm trying to bring across to you is that the rapture doctrine is not a new doctrine. One, Paul taught it, and two, some of the earliest church fathers and disciples of John, for instance, um, taught the sudden catching away of the church. And so this is fact. Let's look at the treatise of Cyprian, if I've said it correctly, who wrote concerning and describing the end times and the great tribulation. He said this, We who see that the terrible things have begun and know that still more terrible things are imminent may regard it as the greatest advantage to depart from it as quickly as possible. Do you not give thanks do you not congratulate, do not congratulate yourself that by an early departure, notice, by an early departure, you are taken away and delivered from the shipwrecks and the disasters that are imminent. Let us greet the day which assigns each of us to his own home, which snatches us hence and sets us free from the snares of the world and restores us to the paradise of the kingdom notice again he's talking about tribulation in the the old language that they use they're talking about tribulation that's never been seen before they're talking about dangers and toils like never before and he says that we will be snatched away the early departure uses that word early departure we are taken away again taken away not coming to taken which is the second coming we are taken away what about Ephraim, Ephraim the Cyrene again another early church father or do you not believe unless you see with your eyes see to it that this sentence be not fulfilled among you as the prophet who declares woe unto those who desire to see the day of the Lord for all the saints and the elect of God are gathered prior to the tribulation that is to come. Notice, prior to the tribulation that is to come, and are taken to the Lord, lest they see confusion that is to overwhelm the world because of sins. And so, brothers, most dear to me, it is the eleventh hour, and the end of the world comes to the harvest, and the angels armed and prepared hold sickles in their hands, Hallelujah, awaiting the empire of the Lord. We will call the kingdom. And we think that the earth exists with blind infidelity, arriving at its downfall early. And commotions are brought forth. Wars and diverse peoples and battles and incursions of the barbarians threaten. And our region shall be desolated. And we neither become very much afraid or of the report nor of the appearance in order that we may at least do penance because they hurl fear at us. We do not wish to be changed, although we at last stand in need of penance for our actions. Again, using very old language, but again, another early church father saying that we, the church, hallelujah, we, the church, shall be taken. We, the church, the elect of God, he says, shall be gathered prior to the tribulation and why have i read some of these early church fathers to you some that was actually part uh, the first one was part of the discipleship of the apostle john and some of these was secondary third kind of leaders in the church it's because not that we use the early church fathers for doctrine but to show you the church folks that they're catching away the, the, the seizing away for deliverance from the wrath to come is not a new doctrine. And so I say, at the end of this prophecy times today, are we going to look at the doctrine of Paul and say we're going to be caught away? Is that going to be our focus? Is that going to be our comfort? 
Yes, it should be. Our comfort is the day is coming when we will be seized, carried off and caught away to meet the Lord in the air. And for that, we give thanks and praise. Until next time on Prophecy Times, God bless you.